waiting over a year in their wait. Sponsor a child with compassion today. Text the word radio to 833-93. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Congratulations to the USC women's basketball team. USC is one of four number one seeds in the NCAA women's tournament. The Trojans, number one in Region 3, are a top seed for the first time since 1986. Their first round matchup is Friday at home against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. UCLA's women's team is the number two seed in Region 2. The Bruins open up at home Friday against California Baptist. Two HBCU schools are in the women's tournament, MEAC champion Norfolk State and SWAT champion Jackson State. Norfolk State plays Stanford. Jackson State takes on UConn. There are also two HBCU schools in the NCAA men's tournament. MEAC champion Howard will play Wagner in a play-in game Tuesday in Dayton, Ohio. Grambling is in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. The SWAC champs face Montana State on Wednesday. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy. Turn up the volume on communities of color in the climate conversation. Connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive. And highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, 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 we care enough. I see the people, no, I got the don't for my own Rashida. Can you put me on with the Nagarita? She stay on my dome, she go. KBLA Talk 1580, welcoming into the space the author of the book called The Invisible Queen. It's a biographical story about Queen Sophia Charlotte, Queen of England, but she is also, uh, she has a BA in uh, psychology and African American studies from Cal State Dominguez Hills, a Master of Arts in Urban Affairs from Occidental College. Graduate Fellowship in Public Affairs from the Coro Foundation, a doctorate in Applied Management, Decision Scientist. Uh, she is a publisher uh, as well of books and with her R.J. Myers Publishing and Consulting Company. And she's also an author. Dr. Stephanie E. Myers, welcome. Well, good morning and thank you very much. Good to talk with you. Good to talk with you as well. We are celebrating Women's History Month. Of course, we always celebrate uh, women around here. We had a lot of women on the microphone. We always celebrate Black History Month every month. But it's nice to drill down and take the opportunity to really um, shine some spotlights. And you have a number of your own personal heroes of women's history uh, that we will get to learn about today. So I'm excited uh, to talk with you. 
Well, thank you. And Dominique, you're one of our heroes also. Your voice uh, expresses the thoughts of women, and we appreciate that, not only here in L.A., but all over the country. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. So well, I guess we can start with the Queen. It's been a, There's been a lot of royal chatter lately with um, all the conspiracies coming out because uh, the uh, Queen-in-waiting, uh, the uh, Kate Middleton is sort of had disappeared from public view and palace put out a doctored photo and everyone's saying, you know, either she got a facelift or she's gone missing. They, they princess Diana at her. I mean, the, the conspiracy theories are, are out of control. Um, at the same time, since I think since I last talked to you, uh, Bridgerton became a thing. Uh, and you know, it's wildly popular Shonda Rhimes sort of, whimsical take on a version, uh, a fictionalized version of Queen Charlotte. Yes, that's very true. There certainly is a lot of fascination with the royal family all over the world. It's just amazing. And Queen Charlotte was a woman of mixed race heritage. Like many, many people in America and the world today, she had DNA from white folks and black folks and and so she really represents many of the women today who have power and who are aspiring to power. And she was born over 280 years ago. In 1744, we had this woman. If she had lived in America, she could have been enslaved because she had black heritage. And Queen Sophia Charlotte was a very powerful figure during her day. And, and even her legacy continues to exist today in many parts of the world. And, you know, I mean, this is part of the royal family. This is part of um, their heritage, right? Absolutely. When Queen Sophia Charlotte married King George III, they had 15 children. And those 15 children had children, and Queen Victoria was one of their children. And their children were the ancestors for Queen Elizabeth. And, of course, Queen Elizabeth is the mother of King Charles and Prince William. So, And what's fascinating for me, Dominique, is that Prince William and his wife named their children Charlotte and George. Their children. Very odd. I thought I found that very odd, <laughs> especially considering that they seem to... I mean, especially uh, uh, William and Kate seem to be have a huge problem with Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, Princess of Lamert Park, uh, that, you know, with her mixed race heritage, she's, I mean, she identifies as a black woman. She is a black woman, but probably um, no more uh, black than, than Queen Charlotte, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's just outrageous how this this racism continues to permeate so much of the world. And what Megan has had to go through is just so insulting and so ridiculous. And Megan and Harry got married on Queen Charlotte's birthday, May 19th. So they knew that there was a connection there. And they had them live in the Frogmore um, house which was Queen Charlotte's favorite place to live. And that's where Meghan and Harry were, were told to go live until they took it away from them. That was so weird to me. Know. Queen Elizabeth gave yeah. it to them as a, like a wedding gift. They spent millions of dollars to renovate it, and then the royal family took it back to put in the pedophile uh, prince. That just, uh, that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense at all. It's, and Meghan, for some reason, and we've all seen it before, the envy and the jealousy is just such a powerful emotion. And you would think that a royal family would rise above that and wouldn't experience that. But Megan is beautiful. She's smart. Her mom is smart and dynamic. That wedding that they had was fantastic with the Bishop Curry there. And so I guess they're just not used to having women who are in charge, who know how to think for themselves and are not going to grovel uh, based on some kind of title. It's weird to me, too, because they, um, you know, it seemed like they were trying to utilize um, Duchess Megan as a tool to modernize the royal family. But 
they couldn't get at, they couldn't get their racism out of the way to be able to do that. Absolutely. And what a lost opportunity because Megan and Harry have traveled through Africa. She's very comfortable with her identity and they've met all over Africa and what an what an asset that they are to the world. At a time like this where there's so much conflict, so much confrontation, if they would utilize Megan and Harry properly, they would be really incredibly important diplomats to work across these racial lines. Look at Israel and Palestine. You know, we have just conflicts everywhere. And I believe they could be really true peacemakers if they were given the opportunity. But for some reason, and, even, and look at Queen Camilla. Here she comes in with all of her scandals and all of her background, but she's a queen. I call her queen side and, piece, and but, just, you know, it's just, maybe that's just me. <laughs> But I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. In a way, I'm kind of glad they're so stupid because I think that would prolong uh, the monarchy. And I'm, you know, I think it's time for that, that I don't think that the UK can afford it. Got too many people, you know, homeless, hungry, and not able to pay their light bills to be paying for a whole monarchy. But I digress. Um, you wrote a whole book about uh, Queen Charlotte. Um what what was it about her that drew you in? I mean, obviously she's a black queen, and <laughs> but but as far as her life stories, as far as her accomplishments, what was it that captivated you? Well, there were a number of things. Of course, the first thing that drew me up into the story was I was so angry that I did not know about her, and when I learned about her existence. I thought it was a lie. When they said Black Queen of England, there was a big poster up on the Internet. I went, oh, come on. Somebody's just making this up. But the more I began to research and the more I learned that this was a woman who was educated in the 1700s. She knew how to speak German, French, and Italian before the age of 16. She was a reader. She went to a private school in Germany that her parents sent her to. And really today when we hear people discouraging kids from going to college and telling them, oh, you don't need to do this and all that, that is so ridiculous because this woman in the mid-1700s was able to be educated. And when King George III, before he became the king, he had a lot of personality problems. And, of course, we saw in Chandra's movie, you know, he had the mental illness ill problems, mental illness problems. And so they needed to hide they needed to find a wife for King George. And what they did is they sent for Charlotte to move from Germany to England to marry him. I found that fascinating. So she married Prince George before he became the king. They never even had met each other before. It was all arranged. And they knew that she was so smart. They had researched all the single women from, from uh, families that had high status. She was the one that rose to the top, and that's why she was invited to marry Prince George. Well, and I mean, did, and they, and they were smart in the sense that if you know if you got a problem child, you <laughs> a black woman is probably the best one for the job. I mean, in general, okay. you know, if you need someone that needs to be <clears throat> gently kept in a in line, um, you know, black woman is probably the best one for the job. We're talking with Dr. Stephanie Myers, and we are delving into heroes of black history. And you're welcome if you have a question or a comment, 809-20-1580. Continuing the conversation as we move forward on KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud. loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. <clears throat> Can't sleep with this cold. Honey. <clears throat> honey? Honey. You need NyQuil Severe Honey. NyQuil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a dreamy honey taste. Feeling better, honey? Honey? I'll take that as a yes. Try NyQuil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu symptom relief. NyQuil Severe with honey flavor. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever. Honey-licious, best sleep with a cold. Medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach. KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. 
KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal, influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580, we've got you black. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. It's game day at Jim's house, and the spread is impressive. Mike's already done some damage with the hot wings, and now he's dropping back and going deep for another slice of pizza. I sure hope he brought the Pepto. Mike knows the Pepto-Bismol provides fast, five-symptom relief from unexpected stomach upsets. He's no rookie. (laughs) The way he's throwing back those nachos, he's the GOAT. Be ready for game day with Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed, keep out of reach of children. Hey, what are you doing up on the step stool? About to clean these light fixtures. The whole family's coming over. And if there's even a speck of dust in the house, my abuela will find it. Here, I got a Swiffer duster to help with that. A Swiffer what? A Swiffer duster. It has this cool extendable handle that reaches six feet to get high and low with fluffy dusters that easily trap and lock dust. So no more step Step stool? No more step stool. Easily trap and lock dust from hard to reach places with the Swiffer Duster. Love it or your money back. Oh, I can't believe tax season is here already. But look at all this info I have to enter. Phil's small accounting firm is growing in numbers. Why didn't I take that typing class in high school? A data entry specialist could really help him in a crunch. I got blisters on my fingers. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for waking up with Dominique DePrima on KBLA Talk 1580. I appreciate you. We're talking with Dr. Stephanie Meyer. She's an author and the publisher of books um, with her own company. Dr. Myers. Talking about Queen Charlotte, I know you have uh, many others on your list, but I think because of the uh, Shonda Rhimes (laughs) movie, it's actually a limited series, which I watched the whole thing. And then she has another separate movie just called Charlotte, um, which is another limited series. But also, I actually really enjoyed it. But how much of that is fiction and how much of it is, you know, uh, credible from a historical standpoint? A lot of it is fiction, no question. Uh, it was interesting watching the film because I could see little segments of it that I think that she was able to get from our book. But yes, there there are some fiction in there and there's some truth. Um, but it, it's mostly for entertainment purposes. It's not a documentary. And there was so much about Charlotte that is worth people knowing, particularly our young people. You know, like many people don't realize that she discovered um, Amadeus Mozart, one of the greatest composers in in world history came to the palace and auditioned for Queen Charlotte when he was just a child. And because she was a musician, a trained uh, harpsichord player, she recognized his talent. And Queen Charlotte mentored Mozart, gave him support, introduced him to people. And how many people know that Mozart was her mentee and that she really held him by the hand People don't realize that she created one of the first uh, hospitals for poor women in England called the Lane Inn Hospital. And Charlotte realized that poor women had trouble getting health care. And the tragedy of that, Dominique, is that's happening today. Yeah. We have women, black women suffering from preeclampsia 
and dying and maternal care. And here 200 years ago, Queen Charlotte helped to create an expanded hospital for poor women. And here today, we have women dying from maternal health failures all over the world, including here in America. So we have to build on the vision of some of these people that um, have done great things in the past. She had 15 children. Can you imagine 15 Mm, children mm, mm. over a 21 year period? And two of her children died from smallpox because she was so clever that she was willing to get behind this doctor, Dr. Jenner, who invented the smallpox vaccine. She was like, look at today, you have people who don't wanna get inoculated for COVID. And here 200 years ago, she was encouraging people to get inoculated for smallpox. And that smallpox vaccine saved millions of people's lives in the world. And she was one of the backers for that. So there are just all kinds of of parts of her life that that have yet to be told. And I hope to be able to uh, produce a movie to tell some of that in the future. That must be wild when you when you see a fictional a huge hit like that and you can tell that your source material your book was part of the source materials. Sounds like somebody should be getting a check. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it sounds like it, but you know, Hollywood is known for uh, <laughs> for that kind of uh, situation happening, so it doesn't make it right, but it it does happen. But I'm glad that people got to learn about her. That's that's really important. So on our Heroes of Black History series, we've been talking with scholars, authors like yourself, about their heroes, and almost everyone has named Harriet Tubman. She made your list. We don't have to go too in-depth because most people do know who she is. But again, why, what was it about her that personally resonated for you? Well, the fact that Harriet had the courage to go down south and help people lead their way out of slavery. That was just so critical because we know that from the beginning of time in America, enslavement of black people and indentured servitude of white people was just something that was normal around this country. And Harriet did not accept that. She lived in the eastern shore of Maryland and she would go down into the south. Sometimes she worked behind the scenes in the military and all of that was throughout the Civil War period. So she was just a really courageous, uh, insightful, intelligent woman. And that's what I just find so intriguing about her. And I'm glad that she has been highlighted because our young people, they really want to be what they can see. And and that's why it's so critical for our heroes, including our Dominique de Primas, to be visible so our young people can see what it is that they want to dream to be. Mm. Thank you for including me in that. Um, you also talk about um, Amelia Boynton Robinson, a much less familiar name. Absolutely. This is a woman who was a school teacher in this small town called St. Mary's, Georgia, which is the second oldest city in America. And that's where my husband's family comes from. It's a Gullah community. It's a very close, tight-knit community. And so Amelia came there as a school teacher. And she taught my husband's mother. But in addition to that, she became close to Dr. Martin Luther King. And Amelia is credited with being one of the people who supported the first march on Washington. She was right there with Dr. King and and at the table. In fact, they would meet at her home. And so she lived only not only in Georgia, but also in Alabama. And she became a civil rights leader. And one of the things that our women today have to consider No matter how you feel you're ordinary, no matter how you feel you're average, you are a leader. Our women must realize they are leaders on the street that they live on, in the family that they were raised in, and all of our women have a right to have a voice. And Amelia, somehow she realized this. So she exercised her voice, and she visited us in Washington, D.C. I had a great opportunity to meet her, and she was just a very dedicated woman who believed in freedom. She believed in voting. And here we are in 2024 having to fight again for voting rights. Here we are having people's voter registration washed off of the polls. And I say to all the ladies on the phone, you are responsible for getting people out to vote as part of Women's History Month, Black History Month, 
all of the months. Next fall, make sure your aunties, your grandmother, your grandfathers, everybody has got to vote because people like Amelia Bowington Robinson were beaten on the ground and bloody. And Dr. Martin Luther King and John Lewis, these people bled for us to be able to vote. And we can't sit around and say, oh, no, I'm not going to the polls. Oh, no, I'm not going. That's arrogant and ridiculous. And we cannot take that position. I know that she actually um, worked to get the Voting Rights Act passed. I mean, she, um, you know, in 1965, she was on the ground working to get that um, that bill passed. Absolutely, she was. And she knew that with people and numbers, there is power. And so she organized people on the ground. And eventually it passed, passed the Congress, and the president um, supported it, and we've been able to vote. And, and we were able to get past segregation. But right now we have people trying to take our vote away. So in Amelia Boynton Robinson's name, we need to fight to keep our vote because that's what democracy is. And we can't be so careless. You know, Vladimir Putin got reelected. He's been in office 26 years. He got reelected yesterday. And he wants he has he has established a monarchy in Russia. Well, we have people here in America who want to establish a monarchy. And that's the opposite of democracy. We want to have democracy. And that's what we believe in. And Queen Charlotte, back to her, she believed in, in empowering people. She was very, very active during the whole abolitionist movement to, to help black people get free. So this is the role that black women have played for hundreds of years, and we have to continue to do that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Boynton Robinson actually lived to be well over 100 years old, which is pretty amazing, considering, like you said, she was fighting. She was on that Ed Edmund Pettus Bridge. She was, you know, getting beat up by cops, and yet she lives to be, I think, like 104 she sure did, and she lived down there in Alabama uh, with her family, and she was alert. She stayed right on top of things, and so she lived a long life, and she was very metaphysical. She was a very intelligent uh, woman who operated on a spiritual level in addition to a physical level, and her faith and her belief in uh, the universe really kept her going. So mm. She was quite amazing. You know, I encourage people to read about her. They can get books on her over the Internet. You know what? That's a great point, and it's also interesting. We're about to go into news, traffic, and sports here, but we, we've got some more um, heroes of hi women's history to talk about um, after news, traffic, and sports. But it is interesting with, with so many uh, powerful, transformative leaders like Harriet Tubman and Boynton Robinson, their faith is almost part of their calling it's part of what allows them to do the miraculous things that they do in the political or civil rights space. Absolutely. And black people, going back to Africa, our indigenous beliefs in Africa have always been one of faith. We have always walked alongside knowing that there's a higher power, a greater power in the world. And that is something we have to build on. And as we go forward, Dominique, our belief system is a system that speaks to nonviolence. Mm -hmm. It speaks to getting along. Absolutely. It Hold that thought, Dr. Myers. I got a hard stop right here, but we'll continue the conversation after news, traffic, and sports on KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Thanks for sharing a part of your Monday with us. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. The Israeli Prime Minister is speaking out against Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's criticism of the Israeli government. During an interview on CNN's State of the Union, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said it's totally inappropriate for Schumer to call for a replacement of Israeli leadership. He said the majority of Israelis support the country's approach to the war against Hamas. Federal sentencing hearings for the six former Rankin County law enforcement officers known as the Goon Squad will be held this week. It comes after they pleaded guilty in August of 2023 to beating and sexually assaulting two black men while in custody. Former Rankin County Sheriff's deputies Hunter Elwert and Jeffrey Middleton will receive their sentences tomorrow. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com.
Compassion sponsorship means food, health care, education, and more for a child in poverty. And there are thousands of kids who've been waiting over a year and their wait. Sponsor a child with compassion today. Text the word radio to 83393. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. Congratulations to the USC women's basketball team. USC is one of four number one seeds in the NCAA women's tournament. The Trojans, number one in Region 3, are a top seed for the first time since 1986. Their first round matchup is Friday at home against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. UCLA's women's team is the number two seed in Region 2. The Bruins open up at home Friday against California Baptist. Two HBCU schools are in the women's tournament. MEAC champion Norfolk State and SWAC champion Jackson State. Norfolk State plays Stanford. Jackson State takes on UConn. There are also two HBCU schools in the NCAA men's tournament. MEAC champion Howard will play Wagner in a play-in game Tuesday in Dayton, Ohio. Grambling is in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. The SWAC champs face Montana State on Wednesday. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. Hey Californians, are you ready to make your home ownership dreams come true? The California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Loan Program might be for you. First generation home buyers can get down payment and closing cost assistance along with a first mortgage to help you unlock the door of your new home. Applications open in April, so talk to an approved lender to see if you're eligible. Find out more at calhfa.ca.gov forward slash dream or call 877-922-5432. A message from the California Housing Finance Agency. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick! Sorry, kids! Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. What happens on Tavis Smiley is the talk of the town. You can now tune in to the Tavis Smiley Show weekdays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Catch Tavis Smiley on the nines weekdays exclusively on KBLA Talk 1580. Eggs are a staple in our diets, and there's only one egg with more delicious farm-fresh taste plus superior nutrition. Eggland's Best. With more vitamins, including six times more vitamin D and ten times more vitamin E, plus 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. Available in so many delicious varieties. Classic, cage-free, and organic. Eggland's best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? We didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive KBLA Talk 1580. Time flies when you're on the radio. We're talking to Dr. Stephanie Myers. Before we um, run up against it, Dr. Myers, uh, tell folks where they can find your book, how they can explore the other offerings that your publishing company has. Sure, they can go to MyersPublishing.com, M-Y-E-R-S, Publishing.com, and they can order The Invisible Queen right from that location. And uh, we'll get get it out to them in the next week or two, and we hope that people will read it and and continue to, to highlight black history because that's really, and women's history, those have to be areas that we focus on. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So you were you were um, talking about you know voting and how um, Amelia Bo- Boynton uh, Robinson you know made that sacrifice as many others did. Um, she oh. marched at Edmund Pettus. She she worked really hard on the Voting Rights Act um, and how we are now facing a new wave of backlash. Absolutely. And you mentioned that Amelia made it to 100 years old, and it was so amazing to see her go across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with President Barack Obama and First Lady Obama at the 50th anniversary of that bloody Sunday. So, yes, she was very dedicated and willing to stand up in front of all those horrible um, law enforcement officials that beat them and tear gas them. And so right now we're looking at a trend in America where we just have to, black people have to show America that we want to see a nonviolent, uh, peaceful, diverse, this whole attack on diversity, equity, and equality is ridiculous. We know that this country was built around this whole melting pot idea. And the fact that people would even oppose the immigration when, they, when their ancestors came here as immigrants from Ireland, from England, from Scotland, from Germany. These people weren't born here. Their ancestors came here. And they came here and then, and then ran the Native Americans out and destroyed the Native American country. I mean, the so reason I'm is laughing like, is because Donald Trump's real name is Drumpf, D-R-U-M-P-F. His father, Fred Drumpf, was an immigrant. And his wife um, was also an immigrant. His wife was from Scotland. Uh, his his mother, rather. His mother was from Scotland. His wife is from, from Russia. Melania has Russian heritage, and her parents were, were staying up in the White House. And Donald Trump, or Trump as you're saying it, Trump. his grandfather, yeah. his grandfather actually operated a brothel. A brothel, okay? That's a whorehouse in, in plain language. His grandfather operated a whorehouse <laughs> in Canada. Now, can you imagine if Barack Obama or some other black person had run for president and their grandparent had operated a brothel, what kind of uh, backlash there would be to that? But he's able to get away with so many things. And Saturday in Ohio, he was talking about bloodletting. If he should lose, there would be bloodletting. Yeah, bloodbath, so yeah. That, that's incredible. So all of your listeners, we have the right to vote. You can vote as you please, listeners. Nobody's dictating to you who to vote for. Of course, we hope that you will vote for the right people. But it's just just absolutely critical because if America ends up as a monarchy and there's only one person calling the shots, can you imagine what might happen to our grandchildren and and our children 50 years from now? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know that it'll take 50 years, but, yeah, it's... It's quite um, it's quite alarming. And, you know, you're putting it in in a historical context is really interesting. You're big on this idea of mentorship and how it shows up throughout history. Absolutely. Mentorship is critical. And right now we have so many of our adults who are so busy on their telephones and on their computers and on Zoom that they don't have time for the children. And so the children, our teenagers and our young people are just going wild, you know, snatch and grab out of the stores and having riots and and malls and mass shootings. So we've got to spend time. Mentorship is one on one time. I mentioned to you that uh, Congresswoman, former Congresswoman Yvonne Braithwaite Burke was a mentor of mine. And when I was in high school, I was in an internship program that she and, uh, and Mervyn, Lieutenant Governor Mervyn Dimely ran, and she took me to Sacramento. My first trip to Sacramento was sleeping on the couch in her apartment, and she was a state legislator. That's how I learned about politics. And right now I'm the national co-chair of Black Women for Positive Change, and we're a national network of advocacy. I learned about that from Yvonne Braithwaite Burke. That is what mentorship can do. And so you can learn lessons that stay with you your entire life. But our adults, I'm sure, Dominique, you must have had some wonderful mentors to be in the media and to do what you do. Yeah, I mean, along the way, mostly people that I've looked up to, 
um, from afar. But yeah, I've had some mentors too. But you know, I have to I have to at least push back a little on the smash and grab because we know some of that is organized crime. We just saw this woman um, busted with you know actually a white woman who was hiring young people to go and smash and grab that stuff and had a had a multi million dollar ring selling this stuff on Amazon. Um, but I mean, your point is taken. Oh. We've got young people who are, you know, in a position of raising themselves or we're allowing the television and the, and the tablet, uh, to be babysitters many times because we don't have the childcare that we should have. And so, um, you know, in, in this age, that's really problematic because there's access to so much misinformation, disinformation, pornography, and everything else right at folks' fingertips. So if they don't have at least a foundation of how to m be a person of good character, they will definitely be lost. Absolutely. And we have organizations in our community that try to do the right thing. I'm a part of Delta Sigma Theta. My mother has been a Delta for 70 years. Wow. And, and, and her friends here in Los Angeles. And we have women's and men's organizations that we have to either create a new organization. If you don't like the sororities and fraternities, create your own. Create it at church. Create it in the community. But our young people desperately need to know how to network and how to sit down with an adult because there's a lot of anti older people sentiment. You know, in Africa, the elders are, are treasures. In Africa, the elders and the griots and the people who hold the history of our, of our race are people who are held upon pedestals. But in America, that's reversing. Now they want to treat a person who's older as having aged out, and they, they don't care about the wisdom. But we know that our culture speaks to, to treasuring wisdom. So our young people need to have that opportunity to sit down with their moms and dads. Absolutely. And if they don't have a mom and dad, then, then uncles and aunts. And a lot of our kids, foster kids and kids that are being raised, don't have the uh, nuclear family. But that's okay because they can find a mentor who can be just like a father or a mother to them if they take the time to do that. We are talking about heroes of women's history. Many of them, as uh, Dr. Stephanie Myers points out, have mentored others and opened the door for others along the way. Um, and you mentioned Supervisor Yvonne Brothwaite-Burke as being a personal mentor of yours. Um, and she she actually broke down a lot of barriers. I believe she was the first sitting legislator to um, be with child and give birth to a child while holding office. Yes, and look at how Autumn is doing so wonderful. She's following in her mom's footsteps. So yes, Yvonne was a pioneer in many ways, being an attorney when she was and running for office. And right here in the city of Los Angeles, she, she just accomplished so much and she laid the pathway so you wouldn't have a Mayor Karen Bass today if you didn't have a Congresswoman Yvonne Braithwaite Burke, you know, 50 years ago. One person leads to another in terms of, of power and, and how they can help things. And if I could just mention in mentorship, going back to my Queen Charlotte being here for a minute, there was a orphanage in London. And Queen Charlotte basically adopted this orphanage. It was called the Wright School for Children. And back in those days, when you had young orphans, they didn't get aid to dependent children and welfare money. That didn't exist. So she taught these children how to embroider, how to make curtains, how to make bedspreads in the palaces. So here she took the time to teach these girls to do what she knew how to do, which was to sew. And they would do this work in the palace, and then they could get a job because the people wanted to hire someone who had done embroidery for the palace, for Buckingham Palace. So right. That was an example of mentorship that she demonstrated back in the 1700s. I mean, and that's so, even a little beyond mentorship, because in that situation, you're breaking through a rigid class structure, which means that there was and often still is no opportunity for upward mobility. And believe it or not, coming from an orphanage and sewing for the palace represents significant upward mobility. We're talking with Dr. Stephanie Myers, Heroes of Women's History on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. 
With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. Paid for by government.com. Did you know? The United States Mint has issued a new Morgan Silver Dollar coin in proof condition for the first time. Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror-like finish minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% .9 pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack a $25 value free with every order call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new morgan silver dollars before they are gone that's 1-800-973-9717 watch out you got me the galaxy is safe once again in the pretend universe kids play with pretend guns in the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Hey there, Los Angeles. This is James Lucky Jr., publisher and editor of Los Angeles News Observer. Are you hungry for news that matters to you and the African-American communities of Los Angeles? Well, buckle up, because we got the scoop you've been craving. Stay in the know and never miss a beat with our free weekly publications conveniently available near you. Or hop on a digital wave and become an exclusive subscriber at OGNSC.com. Don't forget to join the party on Instagram and Twitter at OGNSCINC for behind the scenes access and sizzling updates. No more FOMO. Let's stay informed, connected, and empowered together. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate loses and love wins. And we're talking with Dr. Stephanie Myers. You can find her book on Queen Charlotte, The Invisible Queen, and other publications at MyersPublishing.com. It's M-Y-E-R-S, and then Publishing.com. Uh, Dr. Myers... Um, we just touched, we won't get through all the great women uh, that you mentioned, but we were touching on Supervisor uh, Congresswoman Yvonne Brathwaite Burke. She was the first African American woman to represent the West Coast in Congress, the first woman, uh, the first African American and the first woman of color to serve as vice chairperson at the 1972 Democratic National Convention. And this I did not realize. She was only the <laughs> second wow. black. American woman to be admitted to USC School of Law. This is in 1953. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize those statistics. That's fantastic. That's great. And she's still she's still around. I hear she went to an event recently here in Los Angeles. I think, um, was it at the Ebell Club or something? Some friends were telling me that they saw her there. Uh, Jan Perry, who's a local local person activist saw her at something so yes these these roles are very critical and my mom was head of delta head start here in los angeles for about 25 30 years and that's another way that black women help people is by running these nonprofit agencies and working with the children and helping them to understand what their futures can be because their future is can can be tremendous you know, when, when Queen Charlotte was a teenager in Germany and they asked her to come to England to marry the future king, she could have been scared to death and said no if she didn't have self-confidence. So we have to be sure that our kids do have self-confidence and that they can move forward and not be afraid to move forward. I think President Obama and his wife, the first lady, did a great job with their two daughters. Sasha, and, and uh, they're moving ahead into different fields, and they're doing yeah, Sasha very well. And Malia, yeah, yeah. Sasha and Malia, and that's what we need. And won't it be amazing if we find out, you know, years later, Sasha and Malia, they marry some <laughs> king of whatever someplace in the world oh, and have power to kind of influence the future, but they've got the background. They got the education or get elected to be uh, yeah, a leader of whatever. I don't know that, you know, sometimes our kids run from those roles. It sure is not. It sure 
has to be one of the hardest things ever to be raised in the White House under the spotlight of uh, of this country's press. Um, Dorothy Height, Dr. Dorothy Height, you mentioned as another one of your personal heroes of black history. Absolutely. And, Women's um, history, too, uh, by the way. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Dr. Height was just amazing. The conventions that she would have with the National Congress of Negro Women, and she was related to one of my mother's best friends, one of my mother's mentors, Maureen Perkinson, was a, a relative of Dr. Height. So when I moved to Washington, D.C., I knew Dr. Height because I had met her through this friend, this mentor. And I had a situation one time where I had a job in the federal government, and we were going to a conference in Africa, and I was angry because there weren't enough black people on the delegation. So I was writing letters and complaining that there needed to be more black women on this delegation. And some people got mad at me. Some of the conservatives wanted me to get fired because I was making these demands. Well, I called up Dorothy Height. I said, Dr. Height, they're trying to fire me because I want people like you to be on the delegation. She said, you tell them if they fire you, I will have that building surrounded by 5 o'clock today. (laughs) 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 And when I had the message sent up to the front office that Dr. Height would be out there with people surrounding the Department of Health and Human Services, that issue was over, <laughs> and we got more black people going to Africa for the convention. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, she was fabulous. She And she was, I mean, she was a civil rights uh, leader in her own right. She was an organizer, so that thus the fear of her surrounding the, biz, uh, the building. Um, and she rose to such uh, prominence and respect that she was actually an advisor to First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Absolutely. And she was at the table. She was the only woman who was really at the inner core of the civil rights movement in Washington. When they they had a group of men who were kind of running things, Dr. Height insisted on a seat at the table, and she was there. And so the National Council of Negro Women also purchased the huge, beautiful building on Pennsylvania Avenue. And it's one of the only, if not the only building, owned by an African-American organization in Washington, D.C. It's, goodness, five or six stories high. It's a palatial building. And the National Cong- uh, National uh, Negro Women, what am I saying now? I'm getting all confused. <laughs> Dorothy Hyde National Council of Negro Women still operates and continues to promote her legacy all of these years later. So she is a woman who demonstrated that kind of power. And the women listening to this call, you can all do that. Maybe you don't do it in the same way, but you can do it. Yeah. Um, Dorothy Height, maybe fighting makes you live longer. Uh, Dorothy Height made it to 98. She passed in 2010. Maybe uh, when, you know, we fight for what we believe in, it extends um, our lives in in a great way. Uh, We will um, wrap up our conversation on Heroes of Women's History with Dr. Stephanie Myers when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles is a nonprofit law firm that protects and advances the rights of the most underserved, leveling the playing field and ensuring that everyone can have access to the justice system. Every year, LAFLA provides free, high-quality legal services to more than 100,000 people living in poverty across greater Los Angeles. Their unique combination of neighborhood offices, self-help centers at courthouses, and domestic violence clinics puts Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles on the front lines in vulnerable communities and at the forefront of change. LAFLA's expert team of attorneys, paralegals, and support staff works to provide direct representation, offer counsel and advice, provide referrals, and educate the community about their legal rights through workshops and seminars. With locations all over LA, you can access their services or volunteer to help no matter where you live. And if you have an urgent issue, call to 213-235-0060. That's 213-235-0060. To get legal help, make a donation or volunteer, visit LAFLA.org. LAFLA.org. This is a community call to action from KVLA Talk 1580. 
Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Install activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. The conversation continues right now, right now, right now with right now. Dominique DePrima on First Things First. And it's always lovely to talk with Dr. Stephanie Myers. Um, Dr. Myers, you know, we, we, we just have a couple minutes left here. I know we didn't get to everybody on your list, but, um, you know, as an author and an historian, uh, what do you want to leave us with, um, you know, today in, when we, we think about heroes of women's history? Well, I think that we need to each spend more time learning about our own family history. We need to realize, and I've done genealogy and discovered uh, people that I knew nothing about that can be so inspiring and make, can make you feel stronger and better. And so to the extent that we uncover people who've been overlooked, we know that there are so many inventors that have done amazing things, items that we use every day, like the street lights, you know, and light bulbs and things that we all know about. So we have to realize that people... They like to highlight their own. We have to highlight our own. And we've done a great job of it. The NAACP Image Awards the other night was very inspirational. That was a great example of highlighting our own. And we just have to do more of that. And the stories are there. People deserve to be recognized. And let's do it going forward. And Queen Charlotte is a symbol that our young people need to know about. A woman with good old curly hair and, and brown skin, and she was the queen for 57 years in England, and our young people need to know these stories. Man, that's not a, that's not a blip on the radar, 57 years. You know, that's, that's quite a reign. Um, Dr. Stephanie Myers, thank you for sharing with us as always, and I encourage everyone to support this black-owned business, which is uh, MyersPublishing.com, M-Y-E-R-S. Dr. Myers, thanks so much. Thank you, and thank you for having your wonderful show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Tavis Smiley's wonderful show is up next. You know he always stacks the deck on Monday, so you can expect an incredible lineup of guests from him today. Thanks again to everybody who came out to Black Women Are Divine. It was truly divine. And a big welcome to all my front page family who discovered the KBLA uh, through Black Women Are Divine yesterday. My quote today comes from Amelia Boynton Robinson. She says, a voteless people is a hopeless people. A voteless people is a hopeless people. And uh, love that quote for this time and this season. Don't forget to stop by KBLA 1580. Follow, like, and subscribe on all our social media platforms. And I am at Deprima Radio, D-I-P-R-I-M-A Radio. If you don't have the app yet, what a great day to get it and take us with you wherever you go. History is now and we're making it together. Until tomorrow, one Love. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thanks for sharing a part of your Mungan interview on CNN's State of the Union Prime Minister.